A great team wins that game 10 out of 10 times. A good team wins that game 9 out of 10 times. An average team wins that game 6 or 7 out of 10 times. Washington led in every statistical category, and it just crushed it in time of possession. But here they lost 22-33, and I have many of guesses why and many of – initial takes why Devin you get more analytical than I do and that's tough to do <laughs> so let's let you just expand by what do you if there was a number one reason why what do you think was the number one reason not being able to execute in the red zone and it was not very well quarterback play in the game but when we got to the red zone, I think we got to the red zone six or seven times, maybe even eight times, and we didn't even execute. We didn't get in, and that's where it lies. If you can get to the red zone that many times in a game, you should win that game. Additionally, I, I, I'm just I'm just still dumbfounded to hear the game ended about four hours ago, and we, we're just now recording, and I'm still just dumbfounded by, okay, yes, there's injuries galore on the offensive line, but the offensive line did, did Taylor Heineke no favors. Heineke did not look good. But as bad as they, they looked, Jameis looked like Tampa Bay Jameis, and that's the part I can't get past. How do you give up a giant long touchdown on the second drive? Okay, maybe that can go in the whoopsie category, but when, when I see everything else put together, it all adds up. The Hail Mary at the end, there's a quote from Landon Collins saying, we thought they were going to go short and settle for the field goal. Well, you know what? That's what gets you up put onto the bench because you don't give up. That Hail Mary, I could just tell he was going to catch it. He was he was uncovered. Not a single person even tried to bat it down. They just watched it fall into his arms. That alone. I mean, and Jameis couldn't hit. Jameis hit one pass and 13 passes, and that was that Hail Mary in the middle of the game. There's so much to, that just to be disappointed and frustrated in because that was a very winnable game. There's 33 to 22, can't convert. Heineke did not have a good Heineke-like game. He threw two interceptions and no touchdowns, could not run the ball. It's just a complete mess from start to finish. Well, start off with you saying the deep pass on the second drive being a whoopsie. It's happened every single game, a deep pass straight down the middle. And it's either – it's Landon Collins, it could be anyone. That comes down to Jack Del Rio. And from what I was hearing at the game, the fans were chanting F Del Rio. They want him fired. They don't like him right now. And I can see why. I personally am very upset with the defensive play with the – we have good players out there. They're not executing, and they're not being played right. Landon Collins should not never have to cover the deep uh, portion of the field. That should be one of our better coverage safeties because he's been burnt multiple times this year. Taylor Heineke not playing well. I'm a big Taylor Heineke fan, but he played horrible, and he overthrew a lot of passes, and he just has to have a wake-up call and come back and play better next week. But um, and These are the games you have to win. You could have been three and two going into Kansas City, and now you're two and three with Kansas City on the horizons. It's it's just, I mean, the defense actually, the first drive, the third drive, and I think the fourth drive actually looked really good. They forced two two turnovers in the first four drives, and I'll take that ten out of ten times. So if you allow, so, so go ahead. The reason why that happened is because we got pressure. Jameis Winston is a horrible quarterback when you get pressure. That's why he did so bad in Tampa Bay. But then we started not getting pressure and having blown coverages, and they were making plays downfield. You don't need that good of a quarterback to throw a pass when there's a giant gap in the coverage. And when the whole team isn't clicking, that's on what was the work week like. Well, unfortunately, if that's the case, it, you have to start with the coaching staff. It's got to start at the top and work its way down. Or is the game plan not put in place correctly? Did people just not buy in? What, what, what were the practices like? Were they mediocre practices? I'm not at the practices. 
I don't know. Devin, if Phil was here, he would roll his eyes at this statement. The best part of our team this uh, this weekend was the special teams between Trustways punting and then, yes, even the kicking game. Yeah. But um, a few takeaways I would say is I'd honestly say Scott Turner's play calling was pretty good, but um, Taylor Heineke missed some passes, and then I feel like he always deviates from the run too early. We had one drive where we just kept pounding the rock, even from jet sweeps and stuff like that, and we were moving down the field. And then you get into the red zone. And you and start you passing. Throw, yeah. yeah. Stick with what's working. Antonio Gibson is pounding it. Jared Patterson's pounding it. And then you got DeAndre Carter, which, in my opinion, if they won, he would have gotten a game ball. He played his butt off to step up when the receivers were down. He deserves a chance to start in that lineup. Yeah, I mean, you, you're missing two of your primary weapon receivers and Chris Sims. You you have a makeshift right side of the offensive line, and you're still able to move the ball against New Orleans. Now, I did like New Orleans secondary, but the front half of New Orleans, nothing, nothing you can't see on any other NFL roster. So you're right. We'll have to keeping it to the ground and, and keeping the run going. But the the execu- it was poor execution all around on many different fronts and many different levels. And you, you still had yourself a chance to close it out and win. And even then, that still could not happen. Four, four, fourth and 17, and you get it. Fourth and 10, and you can't get it. You can't keep trying for fourth down conversions. That, that fourth and 10 really ticked me off because you decide to keep Dustin Hopkins on the team and you say you trust him I understand why they went for it I don't trust him but you are saying that you trust him you are preaching in press conferences that you trust him but then you don't put him out for a 45 50 yard field goal yeah and Devin you you gotta practice what you preach Devin and good point it wasn't a 57 yarder I think it was like a 48 or 49 or it was just under 50 I don't know we could keep complaining and complaining and complaining and odds are I will for the next couple of days I'll just do make sure I do it off of air next week is Kansas City I haven't I don't have the mem- schedule memorized further past that but you've got it in the NFL you've got to bring it every single week because there is no popcorn state on your schedule and there's no little sisters of the poor so how does Washington even remotely line up? with Kansas City next week, where realistically not a single person outside of that locker room thinks that they're going to win? I I would say you got to look at it as Kansas City's defense is one of the worst defenses like ours. Our offense, when it's clicking, is really good, just like their offense. If we see Heineke from today, that game is shut out in the first quarter. If we see the Heineke from Giants game and the Falcons game, third quarter, fourth quarter, Washington still may be in the game. But I personally think Chiefs are going to run away with it. Um, Yeah. Follow us on our – subscribe to our YouTube page. Follow us on Twitter at Coach Crew Show, our Instagram page, our Facebook page, and our website, coachingcrewshow.com. For Devin, this is Charlie. We'll see you next time.